this video, we're going to be looking at what could be a revolutionary drug within the hair loss market, cetipiprint. We're going to look at what it is, we're going to look at how it works, we're going to look at where it is in the clinical trials, we'll look at the side effects, then I'm going to show you some other natural ways that you could start regrowing healthy hair towards the end of the video. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel, we do tons of science-backed videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. If you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing. So let's get into the video on SETI Pibrant. Did you know that a new pathway for hair loss was discovered in 2012? Well, this new pathway could mean that there's more to hair loss than we currently understand and that new drugs can be useful in regrowth. Now in this video, I'm going to introduce to you a possible future hair loss treatment, SETI Pibrant. You'll learn how the drug works, as well as how clinical trials work and where the drug currently is in the process, the possible side effects associated with use, the difference between oral and topical cetipiprin and the pros and cons of each. We'll also look at how cetipiprin compares to finasteride and whether the drugs can be used together. Then of course, I'm going to share with you some natural alternatives to cetipiprin that we recommend. First things first, guys, what is cetipiprin? Well, cetipiprin is an oral drug that's currently being tested for use as a hair loss treatment. It was initially developed as a treatment for allergic rhinitis, but recently hair loss related discoveries have made it a better candidate for hair loss reversal. So first things first guys, how does it work? Well in short, cetipiprin is an antagonist of the prostaglandin D2 receptor or DP2. This receptor is responsible for bonding with and responding to certain prostaglandins, particularly PGD2. This prostaglandin has been linked to various pathological responses, including those to linked to allergies, asthma, and inflammation. Now, in terms of how it works for allergies and asthma, now a cetipiprin is believed to interfere with the receptors known to contribute to allergies, stroke allergic responses. The drug was first tested on allergies and asthma. In clinical trials, the drug performed quite well in the treatment of allergen-induced airway responses in asthmatic patients. It was also well tolerated by participants, However, its results were similar to those of drugs already on the market, so further trials were discontinued. So, for hair loss. Now, in 2012, researchers discovered a link between the PGD2 receptor and hair loss. More specifically, this receptor is seen at high levels in the scalps of men diagnosed with androgenetic alopecia. Now, AGA is the most common cause of hair loss in men, though it's also seen in women, and it's believed to be caused by a sensitivity to DHT, which is an androgen hormone that attaches to the follicles and leads to inflammation and irritation. Now, if left untreated, this inflammation causes hair follicle miniaturization. This can then lead to balding. But where exactly does DHT fit in? Well, it's known that PGD2 is produced from PGD2 synthase, an enzyme, and PGD2 synthase levels are increased by, you guessed it, DHT. With an increase in PGD2, the PGD2 receptor on the scalp is then triggered, which causes inflammation. According to researchers, cetipiprin steps in before PGD2 attaches to the receptors and therefore prevents receptor activation and, as a result, hair loss. With the discovery of the possible link to PGD2 receptors, the drug was acquired by Kythera and trials begin, uh, began to test the effects of cetipiprin on hair loss. So guys, we're now going to have quite a deep look into the development of the drug and how the clinical trials are going. Now, as of yet, trials are still underway. The drug is currently in phase two. To better understand where cetipiprin is in its clinical phases, it's important to understand how clinical trials work. Well, there are four main phases that take place during clinical trials. The first phase, so we've got uh, phase one, two, three, and four. Now, phase one, these trials assess the safety of a drug on a small number of healthy individuals, typically less than 100. This can take a few months and the results will determine whether further testing can be implemented. In the second phase, uh, these tests the efficacy of the drug and are commonly carried out on a large number of participants from then phase one. Now these studies are commonly, commonly blinded and they can take a few months to a few years to complete. Then in phase three, this involves several hundred to several thousand participants and these studies can take a few years to complete. Their goal is to further gauge the efficacy of a drug as well as to provide insight into possible side effects. Once completed, it is then that the pharmaceutical company will apply for FDA approval. And phase four, now these take place after a drug has entered the market and they're used to test the long-term efficacy of said drug and or compare it to similar drugs on the market. 
The results of these studies can lead to the drug being removed from the market or dosage changes being made. Now with a greater understanding of the process, let's take a closer look at the clinical trials performed on cetipiprim. Now we've got phase 2 and phase 3 studies on cetipiprim for allergic rhinitis. Now while you and I are more interested in how cetipiprim works for hair loss, it's important to consider the results of non-hair loss related studies. Why? Because studies are so scarce, it's good to look at all the information that is available. Now in this phase 2 study, well this study was conducted at 7 centres in Texas during the mountain cedar pollen season. It consisted of both adults and elderly patients ranging from 18 to 70 years old. The participants were randomized to receive either placebo or various doses of seti piperum. Now once the trial began, a total of 579 patients were included and there were 96 to 98 participants per treatment group and 577 completed the trial. Now as shown to the right, we've got a graphical representation of the daytime nasal symptom score and it decreased steadily when treated with seti piperum. Now phase 3, now this study was similarly conducted at 7 centres throughout Texas during the mountain cedar pollen season. It consisted of adolescent, adult and elderly patients ranging in age from 12 to 76. The participants were randomised to either receive placebo, um, cetipiprint or cetirzine. A total of 630 participants were included in the study. There were 210 participants per treatment group and 604 completed the trial. As with the previous study, uh, cetipazine performed better in reducing DNSS. Interestingly, the SETI piperin results were similar to those of placebo. This is likely due to the decreased dosage as the previous study included participants who took SETI piperin twice per day as opposed to this study's once per day. Now what do these results tell us? Overall it appears that SETI piperin is useful in treating symptoms associated with seasonal allergic rhinitis. Such symptoms include nasal congestions, runny nose, nasal itching and sneezing. Now these symptoms are consistent with an allergic reaction which causes inflammation within the sinuses. As such, seti piperin is shown to reduce inflammation which could be useful in the treatment of hair loss. Now let's look at the phase 2a study on seti piperin for hair loss. Well the aim of this study is to evaluate the safety, tolerability and efficacy of the oral administration of seti piperin tablets at 1000 mg twice daily. The participants had 169 and all of which have been diagnosed with androgenetic alopecia ranging from 18 to 49 years of age and they were all male. Now to further ensure participants were up to par, uh, these are inc inclusion and exclusion criteria as laid out by researchers. Inclusion criteria, a diagnosis of androgenetic alopecia, and the participants must agree to maintain current hair care routine and refrain from weaving, colorants and dyes and any non-study hair loss treatments. Now they had various locations all throughout the US as you can see listed here. This enables a large number of participants to join the study which helps to improve results. Now in terms of results, at this time the trial is actually still underway, as such no results have yet to be reported. However researchers will be looking at two main outcomes to determine efficacy. They are change from baseline and target area hair count within a 1cm squared area and subject self-assessment of the change in scalp hair growth. While perhaps not the most thorough of outcome measurements, this is only a phase 2 trial and assuming good results, further studies will be performed with more refined measurements. So when is it looking like SETI piperin might become available? Well, SETI piperin is still in the middle of clinical trials, it'll likely be a few years before it's available. This of course would also depend on whether the drug makes it through the various phases, particularly phase 3. If and when it's made available, it'll likely be through prescription only. So what about side effects that could come from seti piperin? While the full effects of seti piperin on hair loss are still unknown, previous studies have shed some light on possible adverse effects. The studies which were focused on seti piperin as a treatment for allergic rhinitis and asthma saw side effects such as dry mouth, nausea, drowsiness, elevation of liver enzymes, and anxiety. In one patient, gallstones developed during the time of the trial. This could very well be directly linked to seti piperin as it's been shown to affect liver enzymes. Now what about something like finasteride? How would seti piperin stack up against finasteride? Well there's no doubt that seti piperin and finasteride have a similar endgame and that's to prevent hair loss. But how different are their mechanisms and which is better? Well if you think of the hair loss process as a timeline then finasteride interferes much sooner in the process. That is, it inhibits the expression of 5-alpha reductase, which is responsible for the production of DHT. 
In this way, less androgen receptors are activated on the scalp and PGD2 production is slowed or even ceased. Cetipiprin, though, enables 5-AR to create DHT and the process continues until PGD2 comes into play. It is then that the drug interferes, preventing PGD2 receptors from being activated, which is essentially the final step. So would cetipiprin plus finasteride be a more uh, effective treatment method? Now, as previously mentioned, finasteride is a drug commonly used in the treatment of hair loss. It works similarly to cetipiprin, though with a few differences. So does this mean both drugs can be used together to provide better results? Well, in theory, this is possible. Since they work along separate pathways, it'd be like taking a dual approach to hair loss prevention. However, this could lead to some unpleasant side effects. As finasteride inhibits 5AR and reduces DHT levels, it has numerous side effects. And these include loss of libido, difficulty achieving or maintaining an erection, decreased ejaculatory volume, depression, anxiety, and fatigue. This means that while using it alongside cetipiprin may help to increase results, it can also lead to unwanted adverse effects. And unfortunately, some of these can be long lasting. Now, what about some natural alternatives to cetipiprin? Well, cetipiprin still has quite a way to go in clinical trials, and there's much unknowns regarding its exact side effects and health implications. However, current on-market options, including finasteride and minoxidil, also have their own downsides. So where does this leave you? Now, we've said it time and time again on this channel, natural is the best way to go. Not only can you see positive results, but you can also do so without many of the side effects. So we like to recommend taking a multi-pronged approach to solving hair loss and getting back your healthy hair. So that means doing things like alkalizing the diet, it means doing things like regular de-stressing and relaxation. It means doing things like scalp massage. It means using products like potentially a grow band to help improve blood circulation in the scalp. And all these things can help you um, regrow healthy hair. We've got a few other great tools and that one of those is the Derma Roller. So we've made an in-depth guide on this already, which I'll link you to in the description. Uh, these are great. And then also you want to start blocking DHT. So that can come from blocking 5AR, or it can come from blocking DHT directly. Now you can do this with a combination of uh, topical solutions, which means like things that go on top of your head and you can use internal supplements as well. Now the, the issue is with a lot of these topical solutions and internal supplements, it's very hard to find the right ingredients. And uh, you know, you, you don't know like what part of, so for example, that you don't know what part of the ingredient that they've used and you'll go and buy these things like saw palmetto or uh, reishi mushroom or whatever, you don't know what you're getting. So the Hair Guard Scalp Elixir, we use the finest quality ingredients. Uh, you can see a list of all the ingredients on the back, but I'll also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link you to this in the description. It's a topical solution and you'll see all the ingredients in the description. We, we've spent five years creating this product. The Hair, Hair Guard was started five years ago. So what I'll do is I'll link you to this in the description for you to go and check that out. Now, while there's still much to learn about SETI Pride Print, its results do show it may be a good alternative to the various medications currently available, including finasteride and minoxidil. Now, we do still recommend that you take a natural approach to treating your hair loss, and this enables you to treat the cause, which improves the odds of regrowth and overall scalp health. So guys, that's what we want to share with you today on SETI Pride Print. Make sure to check out the scalp elixir in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.